In this video, I'm going to answer one of the main questions many of you have been asking me regarding the Akantor in the series, and that question is how exactly is Akantor considered as a flying wyvern in Monster Hunter? Let's go ahead and take a look. Hey everyone, Kornapinoy X here once again, back with another Monster Hunter video. So today I'm going to answer one of the main questions many of you have been asking me regarding the Akantor in the series, and that is, how exactly is the Akantor considered as a flying wyvern? Now in order for us to understand why this monster lands in the flying wyvern category, we have to take a look at as much information regarding the Akantor as possible. This includes the ancestry of the monster and how it relates to the flying wyverns, as well as the physical traits of Akantor to see if there's any kind of flying wyvern traits that may have regressed over time. So we're going to take a look at every bit of information that we can regarding the Akantor to finally understand once and for all how this monster is considered as a flying wyvern within the Monster Hunter series. Okay, so right off the bat, we're gonna go ahead and look into the ancestry of the Akantor and even the Okanlos to see the origin point of these monsters and see how they are directly related to the flying wyverns of the series and possibly even all the other wyvern type monsters outside of the Piscine wyverns, which have a completely different origin point in comparison to the other four wyvern groups within Monster Hunter. The four recurring wyvern types of Monster Hunter, sort of flying, bird, brute, and fanged, all share the exact same origin point when we look into the evolutionary tree of the entire series. This is because the ancestors of these four wyvern groups share the exact same origin species which these ancestral monsters could be born from, hence why many of these monster categories fall under the umbrella name that is wyvern. The origin point is a primordial titan which many researchers simply dubbed as the origin wyvern. These origin wyverns are the very first recorded wyvern in ancient history and whilst little is known about these primordial wyverns, what is known about these monsters is that these colossal titans eventually gave birth to the four core ancestors of the wyvern monsters. The only group of wyverns that are not linked to the origin wyvern species is going to be Piscine wyverns, and this is due to researchers believing that Piscine wyverns originated from underwater rather than on land. Okay, so we got this primordial beast linking the wyvern groups together, but what about the Akantor and the Okanlos? How do they fit into all of this and fall specifically under the flying wyvern category? Well, the answer to that question, according to some researchers, is that the Akantor and possibly the Okanlos may be directly descended from the origin wyvern, meaning that they could be considered as direct cousins to the flying wyverns, hence why they fall under this category within the series. So how could they be cousins to the flying wyverns? Well, the answer lies in their ancestry. The ancestor of the Akantor and the Okanlos could be a direct sibling to the ancestor of the flying wyverns, which is the Wyvern Rex. The Wyvern Rex shares many characteristics seen on the Akantor and even the Okanlos. This includes their sheer size, their inability to fly, as well as the aggressive spikes that run across their body, much like that of the Akantor. What separates the Wyvern Rex from the Akantor ancestor is that this monster kept its wing anatomy relatively intact. However, with regards to the Akantor and potentially their ancestor, they lost their wings over time instead. So this is the key difference between the Akantor ancestor and the Akantor itself in comparison to the Wyvern Rex and eventually the Flying Wyverns. One kept their wings intact, the other one didn't. This could be the reason why these monsters are considered as flying wyverns in the series despite the fact that they don't have wings because their origin point did have wings at one point but one of them lost it over time. Now for the most part regarding the ancestry of these monsters, I've only spoken about the ancestors of the Akantor and the Kanlos possibly having wings. What about the actual creatures themselves? Is there any evidence at all that the Akantor and maybe even the Okanlos did have wings at some point in their life? We're gonna go through a live action segment right here in order to showcase the physical anatomy of the Akantor in order to prove that at some point the Akantor may have had wings hence why it fell under the flying wyvern category throughout the series. Okay, so in this low cost live action segment of the video, we're gonna quickly talk about the anatomy of the Akantor right here to further showcase 
why this monster falls under the flying wyvern category. Now, believe it or not, this monster is related to the flying wyverns, but we're talking the pseudo flying wyverns here. So, Tigrex, Nargakuga, and Baryot. The reason that these monsters are related to the Akantor right here is because all of these monsters walk on all fours and they evolve their wings to become feet instead. Now, with regards to the Akantor, it took that evolution even further because, believe it or not, the Akantor did have wings at some point in its life, and the evidence can be seen right here with these protrusions on the feet of the monster. They are not just random protrusions. They are the phalanx bones that would have held the wings of the monster in terms of the webbing, allowing the Akantor to manipulate them by opening and closing them, much like that of what we see with the likes of the Tigrex, Nargakuga, as well as Baryot once again. All of those monsters maintain their phalanx bones, but they maintain their regular size, whereas the Akantor right here, having lost the webbing of its wings, eventually regressed the phalanx bones for its wings. So they began to regress in order to showcase that the monster's wings have long since disappeared. Now, as you can see right there, we do have some strong evidence of the Akantor having physical characteristics that would indicate that this monster had wings originally. This means that landing it in the Flying Wyvern category would make a lot of sense. We can even compare the Akantor's current anatomy to the likes of the pseudo-Flying Wyverns as of right now. However, the same cannot be said for its icy counterpart, the Ukanlos. And this is because with regards to the Ukanlos, any kind of semblance of the monster having wings have long since disappeared. At least with the Akantor, we can assume this monster had wings because the semblance of the flying wyvern characteristics is intact. But with the Ukanlos, that's not the case here. We can't even compare the Ukanlos to the likes of the pseudo flying wyverns at this moment in time. So we can only assume that the reason the Ukanlos landed on the flying wyvern category is due to its ancestry and the fact that the monster may have had wings at some point, but we need to prove that in order for us to understand that the Ukanlos is some form of flying wyvern. And that's gonna be pretty much it for this video, showcasing why the Akantor and the Ukanlos are labeled as flying wyverns within the Monster Hunter series. Now, at the end of the day, I wish I could find more evidence as to why the Ukanlos is considered as a flying wyvern, but for the time being, this is as much information as I can go through in order to showcase why these monsters are considered as flying wyverns. With that being said, what do you think about the Akantor and Ukanlos within Monster Hunter? Let us know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions on these two monsters and whether or not you have any evidence of these monsters being flying wyverns within the Monster Hunter series. Now with all of that being said, if you enjoyed these videos, please consider leaving a like on the video itself and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that bell icon so you can go ahead and catch up on any future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing or any other games that I might be playing in future. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Onward and upward.